You've opened the door to the janitor's domain, a broom closet full of wonders. Beyond the plungers, brooms, and unknown items of disgust are memories of the past. The memories you are about to hear are not for the faint of heart. The memories are meant for mature audiences only. Listener discretion is advised. Prepare yourself for Tales from the Janitor. When was the last time you were properly cleaned? What have they done to you? Ah, don't worry. I'll make you feel all nice and pretty again. I'll make you feel all... Uh, oh, hi. Uh, have you been here long? Uh, I, I hope I didn't embarrass myself. I tend to talk while I'm working to make you feel better. I hope your trip was nice. <laughs> This hotel definitely has some stories to tell. Originally built in 1886, it was built for the rich and famous. But it soon fell into disarray. In 1908, it was reopened as the Crescent City College and Conservatory for young women. But it was closed down again in 1924. It was then reopened again in 1930 as a junior college. But... Even then, only until 1934. It was then reopened again in 1937 as a hospital and health resort. But in 1940, it was shut down again as the owner was sentenced to prison. In 1946, it had another owner and reopened as a hotel again. But it had a really bad fire in 1967 and closed down yet again. In 1997, the hotel was purchased again and underwent a six-year restoration. <laughs> but in 2009, one of the partners that purchased the hotel died in an auto accident, leaving only one current owner to the hotel. Uh, I'm doing it again, aren't I? I'm sorry, you're not here for me. Why don't I tell you a story about... Uh, well... It takes place on the tracks. You know, I think we're going to make it on time. I hope so. The sky looks like it's going to open up. Oh, come on. You're bricky. I think you had too many gathers. Damn if I know I lost count. When we get to town, are we going to see the elephant? You know we will. I wonder if they have any dolly mops. I'm sure that there will be some ladybirds. Are you buying this time? Didn't I buy last time? I don't think so. I thought you only bought the drinks. Nah, I swear I paid last time. I'm pretty sure that you only bought the drinks. <sighs> Fine, I'll pay this time. But next time you're definitely paying. I'll buy the drinks. What time do you think we'll get there? I'm guessing around nine. That should be good. The women won't be worn out yet. I think we are coming up to the curb. Go make sure that Leonard is ready to run the bricks. Just blow the whistle. He'll wake up. I sure hope he does. Hey, well, he's one of the best brake men I know. I don't know if I would be able to run and jump over the cars. He likes it as far as I know. Oh, quit telling Thumpers. There is no way he likes it. From what I know about him, he would swim across a river just to get a drink of water. Oh, I, I know he is not the sharpest tool, but I don't think he would do that. Well, he must have woke up at least. I feel the engine slowing down. Steam is good too. Ah, for now. After this curve, it's going to be a straight shot. As long as we beat that storm. I think we will. We're coming out of the curve. I think we can pick up speed again. I'll blow the whistle. <laughs> At least Leonard can go back to sleep until we get close to the town. Perks of being the brakeman, I guess. 
That storm is getting closer. It will be fine. Well, it will slow us down if the tracks get wet. We will be fine. Trust me. Blow the whistle again. I don't think he has released the brakes yet. If Leonard makes us late, I'm going to... I don't see him or his light. If we stop, we're going to be late. Brakes are still engaged. We need to check it out. <sighs> Get the lanterns ready. I'll go let up the steam. Let's go check Leonard out. Idiot is probably still sleeping. I hope it's that simple. Leonard! Hey, Leonard, wake up! Hmm. I don't see any sign of him. He has to be around here somewhere. Well, he's not in the car. Let's take a walk down the tracks and see if we can see anything. You think he fell off? I hope not, man. I don't want to deal with that. Er, watch out! Herb? Herb? Oh, my. How am I going to explain this? Oh, Herb. Why are we stopped? Leonard! What happened? You wouldn't believe it. I don't know. I believe a lot of things. I think it's better if we just get out of here. And what about Herb? We've got a schedule to keep, and we're already behind. You're the boss. Just let me undo these brakes for you, and we can get going. The Crossit Lights is an infamous story with many different variations of the story. Some say that the conductor and the fireman were fighting, and the firefighter cut the conductor's head off. While others say it was a switchman who got struck by a passing train, and lost his head. And still others have similar stories like the one you just heard. Now, if you're driving along the tracks at night, you can see his lantern still walking the tracks, maybe looking for his soul. The light will disappear and then reappear again, always in a bobbing method that looks like someone walking down the tracks. Some people say that it's just gas that is illuminated, but others still think that it's the conductor still searching. What do you think? Anyways, I wanted to tell you about a little girl just trying to get home one more time. <laughs> Frank, I want to thank you again for taking me to the church retreat. It's no problem. I was going too. No need for other cars to drive if they don't have to. I'll owe you. Hmm. Oh, I can bake a cake for you. What flavor do you like? Melissa, it's really not a big deal. I was going anyway. I, I should pay you for the company. <laughs> oh, that's just silly. What do you think we'll do once we get there? I hope we do something fun. Hmm. I think it'll probably be too late to go swimming. Oh, there's always time to go swimming. <laughs> Frank, come on. You know I'm with Ryan. And does Ryan stop you from having fun? No, I just wanted to set you straight. No need to set me straight. I know the rules. And what rules are those? That what Ryan doesn't know. 
can't hurt him. Oh, stop it. I'm serious. Oh, don't worry about it. Andrea will be up there anyways. You're back with her again? Eh, I, I guess. We're seeing if it'll work. Do you want it to work? <laughs> That's what we're going to find out, I suppose. When are you ever going to grow up, Frank? Eh, one day. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, I hope it's soon. Eh, I'm in no rush. No, but the rest of us sure are. Why are you going to this retreat anyway? I want to get closer to the Lord. What about you? <laughs> Melissa, you asked me for a ride. You weren't going before? I thought you said you were going. That's why I asked you for a ride. I told you I would take you because <laughs> I, I just I wanted to see what was going on. <laughs> thought you told me that you were going. Oh, I'm just joking with you. I was going to go anyway. Oh, don't do that to me. And here I was, feeling all bad. Hey, just sit back and relax. Everything's going to be all right. someone walking on the road? Huh. Sure looks like it. We should stop and ask her if she's okay. Oh, no, no problem. Looks like she was in an accident. Excuse me, miss. Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I was just in a car accident. Oh my goodness, you look all cut up and bruised. Are you sure that you're okay? Honestly, I could use a lift home, if you don't mind. Oh, no problem. Hop on in. Are you sure that you're okay? I have some water in the back if you want to get cleaned up. I have a jacket back there, too. Maybe you should put it on. I'm okay. I just want to go home. Please? Where do you live, sweetie? Down the road a little bit and make a lift. It's about three miles down. I hope it's not too much trouble. Oh, not at all. I'm Frank, by the way. And this, this is Melissa. We're on our way to a church retreat. Can I take a look at your bruises and cuts? I'm studying to become a nurse. I'm fine, but thank you. I just really want to get home. Oh, we'll be there in just a couple of minutes. I really hope my mom isn't too upset with me. I'm sure that she'll be happy that you're okay. Well, uh, which, which which house is it? It's the second house on the left. Oh, oh, I see it. I see it. You, you got a nice place. I like that fence. Frank, stop the truck. Oh, we're almost there. Frank! Take a chill pill. I'm pulling up the driveway. Now, what do you want? Do you notice anything missing? What? What happened to the girl? That's why I was telling you to stop. I was looking right at her, and, and then she just vanished. <laughs> she, she, uh, she can't just vanish. 
Maybe she just opened the door and already went in. <laughs> While you were driving? Well, <laughs> she couldn't just disappear. Could she? I think we should go knock on the door at least. I mean, I, I guess it couldn't hurt. Hello, ma'am. We picked up a woman earlier today, and she told us that this was her house. Is she inside by any chance? Did you pick her up near the bridge? Yes. We just crossed it when we saw her. Is she here? She's not here, and she never will be. I know you might be upset because she got into a car accident, but she is alive. Honey, what I'm about to tell you may be hard to believe. But I promise you, it's not a lie. My daughter died five years ago today, and every year on this day, she tries to make it back home. But she never does. Now, ma'am, <laughs> how do you expect me to believe that story? Her name is Jessica. Her grave is in the backyard if you want to take a look. I'm sorry for any inconvenience she might have caused you, but thank you for trying to help her anyway. Ma'am? Are you all right? I'll be fine. Until next year, that is. Well, at least I don't have to wait anymore today. Do you have a picture of her so we can be for sure? Yes, as a matter of fact, I have one right here. This was taken the morning before she left. That looks exactly like her. That's because it is her. I know that you probably don't understand what's going on here, but... I just want to thank you, and... It will be okay. Do you want to go check out the grave? Yeah, actually, I'm, uh, I'm kind of interested now. Do you think she was telling the truth? Oh, I don't know what to believe. Ah, all, all I know is she was in the truck. This is all too out there. Well, here's the headstone. Frank, is that your jacket lying next to it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I think we should just leave. Right behind you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, there is a passage that says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. If you are ever driving down Highway 365, you might want to reconsider picking up a female hitchhiker, especially one that's wearing a white dress and seems to have bruises and cuts, because she just might be the vanishing hitchhiker. There are a few stories about her and what happens, <laughs> but all her tales end up the same. With the kind people trying to take the girl home, only to find out she's already dead. <laughs> Maybe one day she'll get home, but I don't think so. <laughs> oh, speaking of stories, this one is an unsolved mystery. Although there are more facts... We're going to Texarkana, to the spring of 1946. Timmy, should we be doing this? Mary, it's fine. No one will bother us here. Jimmy, I don't want people to think that I'm easy. I'm... I'm not that kind of girl. Nobody will think that. Nobody will find out we were up here. <laughs> mm, you better be right, Jimmy. Oh, I'm right. Oh, Jimmy. I love being held in your arms. I wish we could do this more often. Hold me tighter. Oh, Mary, I love holding you. We could. I would like that. 
I want to have you in my life. Hey, man, what the... Jimmy! Oh no! Get off me, you creep! Oh no! Stop! Make it stop! Jimmy! Jimmy, help me! Stop! No, stop doing that! No! Oh, no. These people were lucky as the man fled when he saw headlights coming down the road. Both of these victims recovered physically from their wounds, but other couples were not so lucky. <laughs> Come on, Betty. Jump in the water. Paul, are you just trying to get me wet so I have to change? I won't look this time. I, I promise. Maybe I want you to look, though. Really? <laughs> you put a ring on my finger? And you can look every day if you want. In that case, I'll, I'll go talk to your father tonight. <laughs> Don't be an eager beaver. Don't do it tonight, silly. You would be sauced. How about I come over tomorrow? My dad thinks I'm just a khaki wacky. Betty, we've been dating for a year. Why would he think that? I don't know. Why don't you get out of the water? We could check out the back seat before you take me home. Now that is a brainchild. <laughs> I thought you might like that. Come here, baby. <sighs> Don't get me wet, Paul. I just want to give my girl a kiss. You can't wait, can you? Not when you taste so good. Paul, do you think my father will say... The Texarkana murders took place in the spring of 1946. Five people were killed and three were injured. The killer wore a burlap bag over his head with slits for eyes. There was one major suspect, but he was never convicted. Two women and three men were killed. All the women also had evidence that they were sexually assaulted. The murderer was dubbed the Phantom Killer. To this day, the Phantom Killer remains unknown. The local authorities and the FBI were never able to close the case. The FBI released all the documents, and people still have been trying to figure out these murders. But officially, it is considered a cold case. We will hear more about this case at a later date, but now we go to self, deep underground. The ledge is just this way. What do you think's down here? I don't know yet. That's why I wanted to bring the both of you. Great. Show me to it. But we don't even know what's down there. Well, hopefully, we will find out. I hope it's buried treasure down there. That would be nice. I like treasure. We're almost there. And you wouldn't even know what to do with the treasure. I sure know what I would do with it. Oh, yeah? What's that? I'd open up my own construction business. You? And a construction? You can't even nail two boards together. I know. That's why I would start a business. So I don't have to. I mean, you've only been working on your fence for two years now. I've been busy. Are we there yet? Yeah, the ledge is right here. So, what are we going to do? We have to climb down to another ledge. It's about 200 feet down. I can feel it. We're getting closer to the treasure. Help me tie these down. Are we good? Almost there. Okay. We should be ready now. Okay. Now what? You see that void over there? That is what we are going to go into. Where does it go? I have no idea. I couldn't see the bar. Did you drop a light down? Yes, I did. And it just keeps going down. Let me tie a lantern and drop it down. See what happens? That's a good idea. Here, use mine. It has a better light. Good idea. Make sure you tie it good. I know how to tie a knot. Um, 
your boots back to death. Oh, so you want to do this? No, no, no. Go right ahead. Okay, here we go. What is that? Sound of the earth breathing. I've never heard it like that before. I can still see the light. This wood is deep. How far down are you? At least 100 feet. Guys, help me pull the rope. Something has got a hold of it. Just help me pull it back up. Something? Just help me pull it back up. What the hell has this thing? I can't see the light, so I don't know if it's still attached or not. I knew it. I should have tied it instead. How far down did you go? Only about a hundred feet, I thought. How long was this rope? I gave him a one thousand foot. How much was left when you felt the tugging? I thought it was only a two hundred foot piece. There was about a hundred foot left, I guess. There's no telling what you found down there. I don't think it was treasure. Hey, look. I see the end. What happened to the lantern? It's still in the rope. No, I mean, what are these? Are they... are they bot rocks? You know what? I think I'm done exploring caves for a while now. Yeah. I don't even want to know what is down there. What do you think it might be? I don't care as long as it stays down there. I am done with this place. Hmm. The Devil's Hole Cave is in the tiny town of Self. The urban legend is that a gauro lives at the bottom of the cave. The legend dates back to the early 1900s when the landowner explored the cave and dropped a metal flat iron down the cave. <laughs> that flat iron came back all bent and had claw marks in the metal. While the gauro has never been seen, the sounds are heard by all that have entered the cave. And to this day, no one has ever explored the cave fully. Would you go down there? <laughs> Are you curious what's in the cave? Whew. Our last torrid tale is about the lost gold in natural steps. Maybe you can find it. If you're lucky. <laughs> Come on, men. Get all the charges placed. We already have five of them placed, Sergeant. How many do you want? I want this boat to sink all the way, Private. Don't think that will be a problem, Sarge. I want to be able to come back and get this gold when the war is over. <laughs> and we've won. Long, Long live, live the, the Confederacy. Confederacy! Just hurry up, men. People will be looking for us soon. We're moving as fast as we can. This stuff's not really that stable. Lewis, you place that one, and I'll grab this one and place it over here. I can do that. Hey, Sarge, how much money do you think all this is worth? Oh, all I know is that's enough for us to live like kings for the rest of our lives. That's good enough for me. I think we're all set here, Sarge. Just need to attach the fuses. Private Lewis, let's start clearing the area. This is gonna make a lot of noise. I'll get the horses. On it, Sarge. I'll grab the rifles and packs. Just one more, and we're ready. Do you think we're far enough away, Sarge? Ah, uh, we should be. Don't worry. No one is gonna take your crown. We're all set here, Sarge. The honor is all yours. Man, when this war began, we were only strangers. But we've grown to be brothers. A family. Ain't no one gonna ever take that away. But when this war is over, I want us to meet back here, right here, and claim our prize. If one 
or none of us make it back here. Oh, God. Your shares of the gold will always be here. Always. We swore to only take our share and leave the rest behind for our brothers. Gentlemen, it has been an honor to serve with you. Oh, live the Confederacy! Long live the Confederacy! The story goes that a unit of Confederate troops died while transporting a huge sum of gold on a boat. In danger of being seized by the Union, the remaining crew decided to blow up the boat and come back later to retrieve the gold. Unfortunately, said troops died while attempting to sink the boat. According to legend, on some moonlit nights, the soldiers rise from their watery graves, forming a single file line and march a short distance. In the 1940s, some local people were blowing up sections where they thought the boat might be. No treasure has ever been found. Will it ever be found? Or is it just another story that people tell? <laughs> well, anyways, I'm done here. I'll leave you with the song lyrics from a famous band that started in this state. Call my name and save me from the dark. Bid my blood to run before I come undone. Save me from nothing I've become. I'll see y'all later. I got another job. At the Cecil. Maybe I'll see you there. Goodbye for now. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.